Okay. Remember that. All right. Now, so, like I said, a Tibetan master can actually turn on a light bulb in their hand. That means they are able to emit this 4E21 or these um, 4 21 zeros electrons. All right. While the average person ignores the nine-tenth of their very existence, because many believe that they're only human. You know, just like the song says, I'm only human, born to make mistakes. And that's how they've been taught, they've been trained. That song goes over and over again. But if that's what you believe, then that's your belief system. You know, however, in comparison, a normal electric light bulb gives off only 10% of its energy of light, while 90% of the energy is wasted as in it, as heat. All right, once again, the average light bulb only gives off 10% of its, of its light, while 90% of it is wasted as energy. Now, 90% heat from the body is at the top of your head, which is your brain, which consists of 90% of water. And in the same manner, only 10% of the body's energy is stored. And that's the problem with us. Qigong and Tai Chi helps to reverse that polarity. So unlike the firefly or lightning bug, which is able to store 90% of heat, transferring the heat into light, is only wasting 10% of its energy. That is the exact opposite of us. This is why fireflies and lightning bugs are able to light up as you would too is with a activated pineal gland. All right? With an activated pineal gland. All right, so this is the exact reversal of what takes place with the average person. And this is a shame because we should be lighting up like the yoga masters or the Tibetan masters or Qigong the Tai Chi practitioners. So in order to do that, we must practice the exercises that they do so that we can do the same thing. Why is it important to crystallize the pineal gland um, in order to allow for that glow from the top of our head or around our head, which produces that halo or that aura about ourselves? It's real simple. You're in an image and after the likeness of God. And if olden times talked about God being an aspect of the visible um, sun, then you have create that sun disk around your head to be in his image and after his likeness. All right? This, this is just something on which that correlates to this information. Now, here we have Leonardo da Vinci's um, image of man, six-pointed star configuration, ten spears, which is the tree of life, um, as well as also the aura of the circle in which that the hands as they reach out approximately in this same perimeter um, or circumference, which is about three feet from your um, anatomy as your arms are stretched out. If you was able to take your arms and go in a complete circle around yourself, um, that would be about the length of the, person, of the average person's auric fit. Right of the average person's auric cell. Now, that is important because, well, once again, that shows that we're not emitting high enough energy. Now, there's a special technique that is taught within pranic healing in which that we do, which is called 
the pranic healing breath technique in which that we either do empty retention, which simply means that you breathe in for a long extended period of time, hold it for one second, then breathe out for extended time, hold it for one second, and start it over again. All right? There's no particular count in between the one second hold or the one second hold again. But that completes one breath technique. Now, you also have the three, the 6363 of the 7171. All right? Now, this is, this is something on which that is phenomenal because um, those who have psychic abilities or who have good intuition, who have sight beyond sight, are able to see the good shoes of come into the human anatomy. All right? I'm going to have to put that on hold here because a lot of noise. Um, so you can mute yourself in order to talk. All right, so. All right. So um, 6363-7171, as well as also in the retention, those three breath techniques are taught within pranic healing. And those techniques extend your auric field. The average person is three feet, like we said, but you are now able to, after you do the 100 breath, after you do it 100 times, either one that you choose, whichever method that you choose, you will extend your auric field more than 15 feet outside of you. All right? Some masters have been able to extend your auric field a mile. Right, so this is something in which that um, you can work on, and this is developing also what is called the light body, what is referred to as the rainbow body, referred to as the golden dragon body, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It simply means that you are able to reach um, heights of consciousness prior to death. It is also dealing with the makaba or makaba, right? Which is a special technique which can be utilized. You have the 18 breath technique, 20, um, 24 breath technique, 28 breath technique. These three breath techniques are taught by Trevalo Malchizedek, all right? Um, the author of Flower of Life, in which that I got, I'm initiated into um, back in 2002. So now it's been what, it's been, what, 15 years now, all right? So these are sciences that help you, for those who lack soul development, can develop a soul. For those in which that already have a soul, can intensify the magnitude of their soul principle, all right? And you can take your consciousness. There's a, there's a forwarding. Just like you're able to forward your email, there's a forwarding of consciousness that you can do into your golden dragon body or into your uh, rainbow body or your, your light body, your soul. All right? Um, and that principle. Yes. Sorry to interrupt you. But. We wanted to know, so everybody doesn't have a soul? Right. Everybody doesn't have a soul. So, some are soulless, and some, because they have not gone through enough ev um, evolutions, or as we would say, reincarnations, or incarnations, so they have to develop a soul principle. There are some who have gone through enough incarnations, and therefore they have a soul principle. The soul is something in which that has to be developed through incarnations um, sometimes. Oftentimes, the individual is born with the soul, all right? Um, your melanin is the physical counterpart to the spiritual soul. 
all right, your emotional body or desire body, as it is also referred to as in its lower aspect. In a higher aspect, it is known as your infinite consciousness. All right, and we talked about your seven bodies. You have your physical body, your desired body, or what we refer to as your ethereal body, your desired body, which is your emotional body, also called your astral body. You have your mental body, you have your causal body, your spiritual body, and your soul body. These are your seven bodies. The ancient Egyptians referred to them as your shekel, your ring, your kad, or kabit, your kat, which is your physical body, uh, also referred to as your um, your name, your ka and your ba, your aku. Your aku is your glorified light body. Your ka is your spiritual body. So the aku would be your causal body. All right? Your ka would be your causal body. Your, it's called your aku or ku. Your ka would be your spiritual body and your ba would be your soul body. All right, so the ancient Egyptian speaks about the seven souls of Ra also, which is called your seven chakras or your seven um, conscious levels equivalent to those planes of existence. The Aku, the Ka, and the Ba survive death. It's like an egg. Just like your physical body is here, it's like an egg. And you have your physical body, your emotions, and your mental, which that can extend up into the spiritual body or the various levels of the spiritual bodies, all right? But even after so-called death, those three bodies are able to survive. And it's like an age. Oftentimes you will see these bodies as um, these spiritual bodies as orbs. This is where you find um, informational orbs, O-R-B-S, orbs. These orbs um, are various aspects of light. The colors you can see are based on the chakras, and that will tell you um, that when the person passed physical form, what level of consciousness they were on. <clears throat> Very similar to, like, when you look on Star Wars and you see the lifesaver, all right, the lifesavers um, symbolize the level of consciousness that the person is on because the lifesaver actually symbolizes the Jedi, hence the term Jedi, which is the backbone. And that's why um, Osar was called the, um, um, it was called the backbone of Osar, the Jedi. So the Jedi symbolizes one who is able to raise fire through the backbone. And, of course, that would be the, somebody to the lifesaver um, or the various chakra or the level of chakra that the Kundalini has risen to. So you see, for example, um, with um, Samuel Jackson was in it, he has the highest color. He had violet. All right? No, nobody had a lifesaver that was that particular um, level. Okay? So everybody else had... Um, blue or green, you know, somebody to the throat chakra, somebody to the heart chakra. You know, then they was fighting the negative side, so theirs would be red or orange, you know, type of colors. Symbolic to the level of consciousness, the, the battle between the higher self and the lower self. Okay. Now, here we have the Yahivahi in the anatomy of the human body, which equals the numeral 26. Um, then when you go down, of course, 26 is 2 plus 6 is the number 8. No coincidence that you have eight blastopores 
that forms your physical body into existence, and those same eight cells never change your whole entire life. So all the 76 trillion cells in your body changes over a seven-year period. However, these eight, which is at, at the base of the spine, which actually projects the copalini energy, which is a, um, the color of, of copalini is actually a whitish, mercurish color, hence the reason why um, mercury was symbolic to copalini, or quicksilver, as it is called also. All right, all of this is symbolic to this um, energy flowing up through the hollow area of this final called Kota Shashuna within the Sanskrit teachings, all right, which is one of the three nadis. The other two nadis or nodes, or symbolically the nodes or nadis, um, exist on the outside of the physical body, which is known as uh, the physical, or let's say on the outside of the spinal column, let me say that way. Um, you have the Ida and the Pingala. The Ida is on the left, the Pingala is on the right, and these two symbolizes what is known as the snakes of, of Christ. It's the reason why Christ said he would be like Moses in the wilderness and lift up the serpent. The lifting up of the serpent is symbolic to the company and the energy. All right? And so you must lift up, you must be like Moses and Jesus and lift up your serpent in the wilderness to become the Christ. All right? Because the word Moses and Moshi, or Mosha, or Moshaya, Mosiah, um, which we get the word Messiah, Messiah from, um, all correlates from the ancient Kemetic teachings. So Moses actually was a um, high priest or an adept. As a matter of fact, that is mentioned in the book of Acts in the Bible, that Moses was learned in all the ways of the ancient Egyptians. So he learned about these seven souls of Ra, called the Oritu, and the Kundalini energy called Shekel. In South Africa, it's called the Umbalini. The Umbalini becomes the Kundalini as those people went into um, the Far East or as they went further east, all right? And, of course, the first people in that area are still there today. It's called the Jawa people. And from the Jawa people came the rest of the people in that area. I won't get into um, how Earth had been a breeding ground genetically for these extraterrestrials as they began to mix um, various animal parts and, and did drafting and all these types of things um, over the last 300,000 years, but this has taken place. Even then, we are all aspects of constellations of stars. Scientists have, quantum physicists have figured that much out that more than 90% of our physical anatomy is actually stardust material. So when you're talking about dust that you've made from the dust of the ground, well, the, the, actually the dust of the ground could be also symbolic not just the ground of the planet Earth, but also celestial dust. Okay? And it got grounded, and the celestial dust got grounded. Hence, it was made from the dust of the ground. All right, because we know that a supernova had to um, explode or there had to be some type of implosion to have um, created this mass of gas in which that eventually becomes the human anatomy. All right, so we talked about how Yahi Vahi, which comes up to number 26, or if you had Yad, which is um, 10, He, which is 5, Va, or, um, or Wa, which is six, and then E again, which is five. That comes to 26. So um, that, like we say, two plus six is eight, which goes back to the two divided cells, the um, eight divided cells of mitosis. It's called your blastial pores, which still resides at the base of your spine. So in that sense, Yahweh is symbolic to your cellular structure, which 
develops from your um, gigantic DNA, which is called your molecular structure. And of course, your molecular structure develops from your atomic structure. And of course, you have subatomic particles. The electron that we just talked about that is released upon death is one of those particles. All right? So, for example, you have your Holy Trinity within your cells. There's a reason why we talk about the Holy Trinity within Christianity, or they even got it from the ancient Kemetic belief of Asa, the father, um, Heru, the son, and, of course, Isis or Set, the Holy Spirit, the mother. I was about to marry because her name in ancient Kemetic philosophy and teachings her name is Mary, M-E-R-I, Mary. Heru, name is Isa. Isa becomes the same within Arabic as the name for Jesus. That's no coincidence. Okay? And Osa is called the Father, the Father who art in heaven. Because he's a form of Patara. And the word Patara Ra is the origin of the word father. The P is actually an F, just like the word phone. All right? can be an F. They're interchangeable. You ask the child how to spell F before, let's say, the age of, um, by the age of three, and they haven't seen it on the, um, and you just went over the alphabet, and they haven't seen the spelling of the word, they would say that only spelled with an F. <laughs> right? So, you have P-T-A-H-R-A. -A. You have F-A-T-H-E-R. Same consonants, vowels. So, Patara, Put our ray, and you want to put the ray there, R E, becomes the word father. So hence the word Patara or Putare becomes Peter, which becomes Petra, or, or which is Petra, which is rock, I think Greco Hebrew, um, because Greek is nothing but Hebrew. They both evolved from Phoenician, which is Canaanite, which is the ancient. Benu, um, priesthood of Heru from out of Egypt, Kemet, who was the Kushites from out of Ethiopia, who was related to the Bantu from out of South Africa. We keep going on and on. All right? So, this is all historical if we get the various books. So, Yahivahi is C A T G, which we said is Sados um um Sidosin, Adonine, Thymine, and Guanine, which are the nucleus acids, nuclear nucleic acids that determines the complicated process of heredity. Right? The sequence of the four bases or nucleotides. Each nucleotide consists of sugar, deoxyribose. Deoxyribose. Under, what's underneath or uh, underlined is rib. Because when they say that Eve came from the rib of Adam, what are they talking about? Because Adam is symbolic, like you said, to the carbon atom, which is the sixth element on the theoretical chart. The sixth element on the theoretical chart happens to be carbon. And is an atom, carbon atom. Hence, Adam Cadman, as he's called, the heavenly man. And what made carbon atoms? The stars. That's the reason why he's called the heavenly man. Man symbolic to the mind. The fusion of mind slowed down or condensed, the mind condensed, formed the physical body. Hence to form the first Adam, which happened to be Eve. Go to Genesis, the um, thank you, the fifth chapter, first verse. 
male and female. I created them both and named them Adam. So male and female was named Adam. Well, what's the male principle? The physical body, the material, the carbon. The feminine aspect is Eve, which symbolizes evolution. Eve, E D E. All right? You put L on it, it becomes the word evil, turn it backwards, becomes L I V E, live, which Eve was called the mother of all living things. Not of all living humans. But of all living things. So you know that Eve could not have been just one aspect of life called the human beings or human race or even mankind. She had to have been symbolic to what? She had to be symbolic to all living things. So that's the whole life aspect. And here go the whole life aspect here is what we're talking about is Yahweh or Yahweh. Or Yahuwah, the Tetragrammaton. The Tetragrammaton is sacred because it's symbolic to your DNA. All right? That's Eve because Eve made you evolve from just carbon atoms, atoms, right? Subatomic particles, the atoms to molecular, and then eventually to cellular tissues, muscles flesh. That's evolution. And what do CATG does? It gives the genetic message codes for all forms of life evolved. Oh, they go Eve again. E-V-O is Eve, Evo, or E-V-O-L backwards is way. Is way. It's love. So, Eve is love and life, or live, symbolically, all right? And it forms the four rings of the DNA spiraling ladder, in which that we refer to in the Bible in Genesis 8, 28, 12, as the behold a ladder set up on earth, or better yet, set up in earth, that formed earth. That was earth, because you call it earthling. Hence earth, because just so that you have 75% water in your body, just like the earth has 75% water on the surface and beyond, underneath. And 25% mass, just like you have 25% physical material mass that makes up your physical body. Coincidence? No, you made an image after the earth also. <laughs> All right? So, behold, a ladder sat up um, on earth, and the top of it reached the heavens, and behold, the angels of God ascended and descended on it. Well, what's ascending and descending? It's the messages. The message codes. Well, what's the message codes? It's the angles of light. The angles of light. The electricity. The angles of light. Electricity. Is what is being going, what is going up and down. And then, of course, when you look at the DNA elliptical pattern, it's nearly identical, or identical to the Kundalini Shakti elliptical pattern. Therefore, Jacob's ladder also represents the Kundalini Shakti energy, or the Kundalini, in which that is nothing more than the same caduceus or uraeus, or which that you see on the hospitals around the country or this nation, all right, and these are actually just, I'm throwing these loose terms out here because actually it's not a country, it's not a nation, it's a corporation, um, but I'm trying to give an illustration here, and as well as also throughout the world, all right, everyone seems to use that Egyptian symbol, all right, so for people to say that they're not using um, ancient Egyptian information or material, Mm, you know that's not true. The secret societies is based on ancient Egyptian material. Whether it's the Rosicrucian, the Golden Dawn, the OTO, whether it's Freemasonry or Masonry, 
Everything is based on ancient Egyptian. Why? Because that is where we still have the oldest relics and artifacts. Because they said a handwriting is on the wall. Yeah, it is in ancient Egypt. It wasn't on the wall when you read about it in the Old Testament. Because that wall don't exist unless that wall was talking about specifically ancient Egypt. Because, yes, that handwriting is on the wall there. And if we had a greater intuition, we'd be able to decode the sciences behind it because that's what, this is the information that they are using in order to monopolize, oppress, depress, suppress the beings on planet Earth. And this is less than 15% of them. And in fact, 1% is attempting to rule the 99 and kill off more than 90%. You don't believe me? Just simply go to Atlanta, Georgia, where there's a monument set up to them during population control agenda, genocides, um, eugenics, and killing off Um, billions of people and only leaving about 500,000. Right? And that is important to know because this make it imperative that you raise yourself up to Christ. Remember, Jesus had to raise up to Christ symbolically. He was on the tree called the cross. The cross is symbolic to the physical body. The tree because you happen to be same melanated coloration as a tree. So it was on this tree. Jesus symbolizes um, Shu, which is the personification of air. Jesus' name in the Hebrew is Yahshua. And the middle portion of Yahshua, which is Shu, in between Yahweh, Yahweh is Yahweh. which was the Old Testament deity, the New Testament deity has been, has shoot in between the Yah and the Wah. What happened? Well, that's the same thing that you would see with Gabi Newt in the scene in ancient Kemet. Then in the new scene, that's in the old scene, in the new scene you would see Geb, Shu, and Newt. All of a sudden, Shu is in between Geb and Newt, which is symbolic to the Yah and the Wah, which is symbolic to the lower self and the higher self. And the Shu, which is the breath, symbolizes the polarities that if you learn the science of breath, you can dwell in either one. You can dwell materialistically, which most people choose to do, or you can dwell amongst the stars. Hence the reason why Newt had a body with all these stars embedded inside of because it symbolized infinite consciousness. The sky the limit, as they say. The sky is the limit. And even if you don't make it to the stars, at least you'd be amongst the, well, no, how they say it? And if you don't make it to the moon, at least you'd be amongst the stars. So something like that they um, used to say. Well, that is all symbolic to the resurrection or the erection, symbolic to sexual energy uh, resurrecting or going up the spinal column to resurrect the Christ consciousness and murder the devil, which is the flesh, symbolic to Judas or Jesus, whichever way you want to take it. In particular, they refer to it as Judas, the betrayer, the supplanter. All right? And I'm calling him the supplanter because of Yaku, the story of Yaku. Yaku or Jacob means supplanter. But the fact that he kissed Jesus on the cheek um, symbolized a betrayal or a mockery um, act 
same thing that you see with Cypher with Neo in the movie Matrix. All right. But Revelation, the third chapter, and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written where? Within. And on the back side, where's this book written at? Not only is it within, but it's on the back side. But damn, that's where your digit is, your spinal column. And it's sealed with what? Seven seals, symbolic to the seven chakras. All right? Literal interpretation will have no explanation for this. And those who read it, in particular um, Christian preachers, pastors, etc., um, will give no explanation for this because they don't know the codes. Because the Bible is not just written literally. It's not just historical. It is, it is not just exoteric dealing with the external mechanisms. It is also esoteric, dealing internally. Because as above, so below. As within, so without. That is the supreme axiom. And if we read, if we read these quotes carefully, these verses carefully, we will see how the esoteric plays a factor in this. All right, we will see how it plays exactly in this. All right? That's the problem. We're not doing enough research and study um, on these things. All right? So, the Yahivahi, which is the Thymine, Adonai, Cetosine, and Guanine, these are the four proteins that are arranged three at a time as a double strand helix. All right, and combined equals 72, as in there's 72 angels or angles of light, in which that um, makes up what is known as the tetragrammaton um, or angelical principles, uh, what is called the um, the name Hashem or um, of Yahweh. All right. So this is very important. Um, the Yahivahi, like you say, 26, and then of course, Yah is 10. When Yah and He come together, it's 15. When Yahivah is 21, and then 10, 15, 21 comes to the total of 46, which happened to be what? 23 pair chromosomes of man, 23 chromosomes of woman, when they come together, form a 46 chromosome being. Is it a coincidence that Adam's numeral value is 46? No, it's not. Go and check Gematria, Hebrew numerology. It tells you specifically that Adam's numeral value is 46. Because remember, in Hebrew, just like in Arabic, there's an equivalent of a number to each letter. So a lift back you know, so forth, so Gimel, you know, these have numeral values to them. A is one. So if you took Adam and it came up to 46, all right, so the A, D, A, M, all right, all right, A, D, A, M, the A's are one. All right? Now, that's important because Adam and Dem both means the same thing in Hebrew. It means made from the ground. Or it means blood, ray. That's important because it's talking about, you remember, we, when people say that um, life is in the blood. Now, that's very important because, you know, we have here that esoterically in the case that 23 chromosomes for man, 23 chromosomes for women, which is the 46 chromosomes that produce life or human chromosomes, but also at 23 hexagram in the I Ching means broke apart or break apart. And also, there's DNA irregularities occur 
every 23rd intro. Now, once you know that, and you're dealing with genetics or DNA, then you know how they were able to make the various races, so-called races, on planet Earth. And um, when you look up the word races or race in the um, dictionary, it um, states animal. It's talking about animals. All right? Um, and there's a purpose or a reason for that. All right, now you also have Dr. Max uh, Perutz, who says that there are about 100 million pairs of nucleotide base distributed amongst the 46 chromosomes in a single human cell. Now you got 76 trillion cells, so 76 trillion or to 100 trillion cells times 100 million pairs of nucleotides. I leave that for you to count. But if you take the A over Adam, and like you said, it would just leave down with D M or D A M is equivalent to the numeral value of forty five. Which is still Adam, but it's now it's forty five. Now if you take E, which is the numeral value of nineteen, and if you take forty five plus nineteen, it comes to what? 64. Now, why is 64 important? Because there's 64 permutations in DNA. You have 22 coding, which means active DNA, all right, which is, they say it's about 10% or so. And then you have um, 42 non coding which they say um, correlates to around 90% or so. And the problem is, is that only a portion of the 42 is active, but most of it is what is called non-coded. In other words, not active. So we don't even have all of our DNA capabilities. We don't tap into our full capabilities of DNA. Because within DNA is your intellect, which is your, which is nothing more than memories that have been gathered from your ancestors. Because you are a physical composition of their thoughts and memories in human form. That's what you are. You are a walking thought form of stardust. A walking thought form of stardust. That's what you are. All right. So. Um, we went over this, as you see, 1 over 64, very important because that symbolizes the eye. This eye symbolizes or represents the area in the brain, which deals with the corpus callosum, as well as your thalamus, your hypothalamus, your pineal gland, pituitary gland, which are your spiritual centers. These are your spiritual centers in your brain. This is the correspondence between ancient Egyptian cosmology and the cranial vault. Of course, the vault of heaven is similar to the ark or the bark, which is over top in the ark there. Um, it's the term archangel also. Um, as the sun is underneath and then the hawk is underneath there, which is the form of Heru. And then Heru is standing on the platform, which is on top of the jejid, which symbolizes the spinal column or the backbone of Osiris. And it's holding a crook and a flare, all right? That is symbolic to the 23rd Psalms, that rod and our staff, that comfort me. On the left and right, you have our set, the crown um, on our head, which is a seat, symbolic to the seat of our saw. And you have Nebhet with um, what looks like some type of um, stand or foot um, stand. And wish that is she's on the left there, well, right, um, from our perspective of view. And so this is similar to Heru and the sun disk, which is our ton or Ra. Now, the pineal gland is the massive endocrine gland and is located in the center of the brain. Pineal gland, hypothalamus, thalamus, as well as also the pineal pituitary glands comprises what is known as the third eye, the spiritual eye, all right? From a metaphysical perspective, it's been known 
It has been known to link between the physical world and the spiritual worlds. Have you known it? Because when you go to sleep at night, your two physical eyes are closed, but yet you are able to see the same things in your mind as you were with your two eyes open. How is that possible? That means that there's something in your head which actually is an eye. And where's this eye looking into? Because we know that these two physical eyes look on this plane. So what the hell is the eye in your brain looking towards? The spiritual worlds, the astral planes. And it functions as a link to prophecy, intuition, and increases spiritual awareness and consciousness, and also give you the ability to speak for the day. As the astral plane is the realm, which is the ionosphere, magnetos, um, it's called the magnetis, magnetosphere, and the ionosphere is the realm where our ancestors go to, referred to as purgatory. The place where you go to rest or go to in order to later reincarnate back to earth. That's if the heart is heavier than the feather, which you see on the ancient Egyptian walls, which is known as Judgment Day. All right, it's Judgment Day. Judgment Day is when you physically die. Not the world ending, because um, the world itself, um, if we continue um, going in the path that we're going in, no nuclear um, catastrophe, um, the world may, may last another 5 billion years. And guess what? We've been on here damn near the whole time. in various incarnations. And the same electrons or the same electronic mass that you leave here with, you come back with. That's the science of the soul. New body, same ele electronic emissions or mass. Same soul. For those that don't have a soul, then they return to the realm of form. Which means that those energies go into um, those who study these occultic sciences, whether it's magic or, or whether it's um, Qigong or Tai Chi, healing. It becomes pranic energy. Stardust material. Just like the physical body goes back to the depths of the ground and becomes the dust of the ground. The soul does this, um, the, um, the spirit, spiritual aspect of the person does the same thing. Who doesn't have, or who did not develop their soul personally. And it's not something that you just, just that is just automatically going to happen. If it was, then Christians wouldn't have a platform to stand on. When they always talk about we need to save Billy's soul. We need to save somebody's soul. And you know, who wants their soul to be saved tonight? The only thing you got to do is accept Jesus into your life. You know, you got to do more than that. That might be the first thing you need to do, but it ain't the last thing you need to do. Okay? But this is what they're being taught. It's definitely not the last thing you need to do. All right, so um, this here is the I Ching and the genetic code 64, the numbers of hexagramic symbols that make up the I Ching oracle, and also the number of possible DNA coding. The way DNA, um, which is a sort of organic computer, is even talk about building nano computers using DNA molecule. And it transmit information is through combining any of the four quantum nucleotides, in other words, any of the four um, amino acids that we just made mention of, which is Yahi Bahi, cetosine, thymine, guanine, and, and, um, and adonine. Sorry, so any four combinations of these get in a set of three. Hence, give you 64 possible amino acid sequences. Hence, amino acids are the building blocks of life. 
All right. Now, why am I saying all of this? Because First Corinthians three sixteen says, "Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you?" If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, which temple we are. So, where does the Spirit of God dwells at? It's in you. First Corinthians six nineteen twenty. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? So, when people were looking at the Holy Spirit, they weren't looking at the Holy Spirit inside of themselves. Says, whom you have from God, and you were not your own. For you was bought at a price before glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, hold up. Glorify God in your body. So, hold up. Spirit of God, glorify God in your body, the Holy Spirit, which is in you. And then 1 Corinthians 6, 16, 18 says, For ye are the temple of the living God. And God has said, I will dwell in them. Well, hold up. This is a whole lot different than us looking at God outside of ourselves as we've been taught to do in all the so-called monotheistic belief systems. But this Christianity, Islam, or Judaism, they have us looking externally, but yet they have occult schools behind each and every one of them, which teaches the same principle. The Gnostics taught this in Christianity. The Kabbalistic teachers taught this in Judaism, the Sufi masters teach this in Islam. So all of the esoteric schools teach the same thing, that God dwells within man. It is only the esoteric schools, exoteric, that is, external schools that believe and teaches that God is somewhere far, far away, and man can't get to him. So because he can't connect to him, he has to do everything he can, such as pray, and kneel down and do all these types of things. There's nothing wrong with prayer. Don't get me wrong, because positive affirmations help um, deal with negative mind states. Prayer, affirmations, decrees, words of power, what is called hakao, or hesis, sounds of power, words of power. These things are necessary in order to help with the mental functions on a daily basis dealing with this world. I chant daily or say prayers daily because of the things that takes place. So don't get me wrong. Prayer is necessary. And even Islamic prayer, when you say al-Fatiha, those seven verses or stanzas or what's called ayat, that surah raises kundalini through those seven eyes of Allah. Because each stanza, which ends with the ayin sound, the ayin is the 16th and the 18th letter in the Hebrew and Arabic. The 16th and the 18th letter in the Hebrew and Arabic is ayin. A-I-Y-N or A-Y-N is ayin. And the symbol is an I. The symbol is an I. There's no coincidence. So when you read in the Holy Quran, circle seven or the Holy Quran 101, 102, and it says that um, Allah has seven eyes, then you know what they're talking about. And it's through reading Al Fatiha. And remember, remember, we, we said about Al Fatiha is Putara. All right? Putara, as you said, symbolizes the Father. And in the word Putta, means opener. Is that a coincidence? That ancient Kemite or Kemetic teachings from the Metro Metro. Well, being that Arabic is a child of Metro Metro, more than 70%, more than 60 to 70% of it is from Metro Metro. Same as with Hebrew. It comes from the Dem um, um, Demotic script as well as also from the Marit um, Maritic script. These two scripts is where Arabic and Hebrew comes from, which is from the Metunetra. 
the word of God. This is why they say they have, um, why they say that their tongue is the mother tongue because it stems from the mother tongue, which is the metronature. The metronature at one time was spoken all around the world. Okay? Just different dialects. So, this is the problem that is taking place on planet Earth. So, in the movie Matrix, Morpheus shows Neo a Duracell battery and told Neo that this is all we are to them. True, you are a battery, as I showed you earlier about um, the ability of being able to change the polarity just like a light bulb or a lightning bug. I should say either you're going to be like a light bulb or you're going to be like a lightning bug. I want to be like a lightning bug, personally. Retain the 90% of my energy and only losing 10% as heat. The 90% goes into lighting me up. Hence, just like the Christian song says, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Hmm, that's deep. Hmm. And that just happens to be a tune, a gospel, ghost spell, that you might want to tune into. So when the battery is alive, and the output of electrical charges is alkaline, because right on the pack of the batteries, it says that it's alkaline. It's right on the pack of the batteries. But when the electrical charge is dead, the battery is acidic. Well, if that's the same about your, 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 your battery, which is your body. That's what you are. You're a battery. That's what the jid look like. The jid looks like an ancient battery, which happens to be the backbone of Osiris. The, conduct, the, um, the conductivity takes place within your spinal column, which the nerves in your spinal column goes out to all your organs. to send messages to, and it goes out to all your um, endocrine glands, which, your, um, which is for hormonal balance, called your ductless glands. So as your body is also, is about 25% acidic and 75% alkaline. It is recommended that you consume roughly 25% acidic foods or 75% alkaline foods. And this ratio helps keep you here. How do we know? Because our bodies are 75% water and 25% fat or earth. So in the body, so when the body is too acidic, you will feel ill, sick, suffer from ailments, and disease. Alkaline water and alkaline foods that are electrical charges your battery or your body. There's a reason why you want alkaline water and alkaline foods. But if you get alkaline water, you want a high ORP level of the water which is the oxygen per rate, all right? You want, you want the high oxygen level, all right? So along with alkaline water, which the water needs to be about 7.4, which happens to be the same as your blood or the blood plasma, um, it has to be about that um, or just a little bit higher in order to get rid of um, acidic, um, um, acidic um, acid, I should say, acid in your body, all right? Now, also, getting these 12 tissue, muscle, cell salts on a daily basis also correlates to you receiving and having good health, all right? One of the plants in which that has all 12 is dandelion. Dandelion greens, when they are in season, is excellent source of healing. You, know, right? you might want to pick some during the spring and summertime and freeze them so that during the wintertime, you still have some dandelion leaves. All right, but look at the chart. These are 12 nutritive cell, blood, muscle salts. And these salts is the salt that you need to be eating on a daily basis. 
on getting on a daily basis because these sources will feed the cells and keep that electricity going, flowing. All right? It's a known fact that salt um, is a good medium, all right, for conductivity or electricity. All right? It helps with that measure. So, um, as you see here, um, you can see, um, let's start at Aries over here to the left of the screen. And you see Aries. And of course, you know, that's March 21st through April the 19th, which the 19th, I, my, my born day falls on that day. Um, some say the 20th now. But on the old ones, just like on here, it's the 19th. But potassium phosphate, potassium phosphate, and it helps with what? The nerves, as you see here, the brain, gray matter, the cerebrum, the spinal cord, memory, and sensory nerves. Potassium phosphate, potassium. Let's see, what, what has potassium phosphate? Bananas. Bananas. And certain other fruits. All right, let's go to Taurus. Taurus is um, sodium sulfate. It helps with the liver, the gallbladder, the cerebellum, cere um, cerebrum, or cerebellum, excuse me. Um, the neck, the throat, all right, also the shoulders and all, well, not the shoulders, the throat, and um, regulates um, the tissues, in particular the thyroid and the thyroid glands, all right? Then um, you have right here, next is Gemini, and that's the lungs, all right, the shoulders, the hands, arms, etc., and of course, that's Potassium chloride. All right, then you have cancer, which is calcium fluoride, which helps with the breast, stomach, collective, connective tissues, and um, basically the elastic fibers. All right, then you have the, um, the magnesium phosphate, which is Leo, the heart, the motor nerves, the um, basically the back and um, the sides um, near the heart um, area, et cetera, et cetera, as well as also for, um, what is that, spasmas and pains, all right? And then you have the tangent sulfate, Virgo, carries of the oxygen, bowels, um, skin, hair, solar plexus. So if you have diabetes, a problem with the pancreas, guess what you need to uh, re-up on? Potassium sulfate. Sulfur. Potassium and sulfur. All right? Then, of course, you have Libra, uh, which deals with the kidneys, all right, in particular. Um, so problems with kidneys, people on dialysis, machines, means that they have a lack of what? Sodium phosphate. Okay, it also helps with acid neutralizing the bladder. All right. Um, once again, dandelion has all 12 of these nutritive blood salts, muscle salts, tissue salts, nutritive salts that they refer to it as. And you can get them from, from um, GNC or in particular vitamin shop actually has a bio cell which has all 12 um, in a pill, in a little white pill. So you can take that daily several times a day in order to re-up on the supply of these cell salts. Right? You have Scorpio, all right, which deals with calcium sulfate, all right, which the skin, um, cells, blood, you know, um, et cetera, et cetera. Procreative organs, of course. And then you have silica, which is Sagittarius, 
and that's the hair, the nerve, the skin, the bones, et cetera, et cetera. Then you have Capricorn, calcium phosphate, which is the bones, the knees, the teeth. So you have the teeth problems and issues, then of course you need calcium phosphate, right? Aquarius, um, sodium chloride. It controls the water on distribution in your body, saline solution, um, as well as the blood, the ankles, wet corpuscles. And next you have Pisces, which is the last, which deals with what? Iron phosphate, all right? For which that carries oxygen, red blood, um, um, corpus, um, inflammation, issues and conditions, strengthens the walls of the blood vessels and arteries. So, these are the 12 blood um, tissues. Now, the thing is, is that you take yours on your birthday, uh, the birth time, etc., etc. You take yours during your birth month, and you take three months after. Why? Because you was formed nine months, but Fruit don't get ripe until 12 months. That means there's three months, so what's that missing? Well, actually, three months, you was on the astral plane, an etheric plane, communicating with the mother and father in order for they to get used to you coming into existence. You was coming through by way of dream. If they're sensitive enough, they would have dreamed about you or have dreamt about you. Or family members would have seen fish in their dreams. This is how fish became symbolic to Jesus. Of course, people used to dream about fish, about birth, birthing a child. Because remember, the sperm happens to look like a tadpole, which symbolizes, um, in a sense, a fish or spermazoa. Hence, the reason why Christians on the back of the car have Ichthys, which is the fish symbol for Jesus. And don't even realize it. And it's talking about spermazoa. It's talking about regeneration. Reproduction. The seed. Hence, Jesus is the seed of David. All right? All right, so... Right here, you take it down, take three cell salts after your sign daily for healthy your body, cell salts, or mineral constitutions of the physical body to be taken for what? Maintenance or when having ailments of persistent body parts. Utilize the art of reflection or cause and effect, 180 degree polar reflection to diagnose. So if you have a problem with your kidneys, that means also take it for theories. Because Aries is the opposite to Libra. You have a problem with Taurus, the opposite is Scorpio. You have a problem with Gemini, the opposite is Sagittarius. The opposite of um, Cancer is Capricorn. All right? The opposite, uh, let me see here, the opposite of Leo, all right, is Aquarius. So forth and so on. The opposite of Virgo is Pisces. So if you're taking it for one particular um, organ, then you must also um, take it for the other polarity-wise. All right? Because what goes up must come down um, symbolically, as we would say. And this all correlates to the foods that we need to be eating. Because remember, 25% acidic, 75% what? Alkaline. Some say 80% alkaline and 20% acidic. All right? Fine. But let's look at the most alkaline foods that keep you here or keep your battery going. All right? The herb stevia or plant stevia. Lemons, watermelons, limes, grapefruits, mangoes, papayas. Make sure they not have Hawaiian papayas because Hawaiian papayas are GMO. Asparagus, onions, vegetable juices, parsley, raw spinach, broccoli, garlic, olive oil, as well as also herbal teas and lemon water. 
All right, lemon water is used in the morning time in order to help get rid of mucus upon awakening and opening of your sinew um, um, passages and your own um, and your own um, alkalines your blood and your digestive system. Even though lemon is acid, when it gets um, when the juice gets into your stomach, it transforms into alkaline. You become alkaline. Right. The next alkaline is maple syrup, rice syrup, right? Dates, figs, melons, um, as well as grapes, papayas, uh, like I said, uh, Hawaii, kiwi, um, berries, apples, pears, as well as raisins, okra, squash, green beans, um, beets, celery, lettuce, zucchini, sweet potatoes, carob, almonds, flaxseed oil, breast milk and green tea. Of course, you can't get breast milk on a daily basis, all right? But for the child and the mother, the child is getting um, some good stuff because it's alkaline. And as you see, it has to be at least 7.4 um, for the plasma and the blood. If anything get below um, 7, it start going into the acidic range and we can look at you know, death, um, around 25 to 20 hertz death, um, um, a person um, start, you know, that's death, you know, basically. All right. Once it, once, once your um, energy levels reach around that, it, it goes into that point. All right. You start, you might as well start making sure you, you know, have all your insurance papers and everything together. So your body is a frequency. Remember, start this energy, that's frequency. All right? Now what cleanses your body and cleanses the melanin is vitamin B complex, specifically B6, B, um, B2, B6, and B12. Um, the plant that has high amounts is what? Is Corella, Spirulina, um, Blue Green Algae, all right? Um, wheatgrass for those who can't take wheat. Um, you know, green leafy vegetables such as kale for those that stay eat kale or spinach, as well as um, mustard greens, all right? So um, these are just some of the herbs in which that helps cleanse the melanin and keeps your body what? Alkaline. And we carry all these herbs. No, right. We carry um, all these um, plants as far as herbs, um, like my wife said. So, all right. So, melanin, the chemical key to black greatness, is talking about the harmful effects of toxic drugs on melanin um, centers, uh, which you're uh, within the black human. Now, um, your melanin centers also um, correlate to your chakras. Your chakras are melanin centers as they produce hormonal balance. So that means that it also helps with what? Cleansing the melanin. Now, what is melanin? Melanin may be viewed as a battery. So here goes the battery thing again, correlating to the Duracell battery um, that just like the Energizer button, you keep going and going and going and going. Of course, Energizer is different than Duracell, but still, I'm correlating it too. All right? Anyway. Um, is a battery that is partially charged and can always accept an, what, an additional electrical charge. So everyone has melanin. If not, it wouldn't be living. All right? So when sunlight or other energies come in contact with the melanin battery, it increases the charges of the battery to a certain degree. Now, of course, you have different types of melanin. You have... Um, Phenomelanin and um, neumelanin, ne 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 something like that. I'm not mistaken. So there's various forms of melanin. Um, but the fact that we are living means that we have melanin, some form of melanin. Now, when the energy is captured, the battery has more energy to use in the body. That's the whole point of doing chicken and Tai Chi and waking and praying and killing. These energy modalities, where you can have more energy to use. This means that the human being is charging what up their melanin 
right? And it possesses the unique ability to absorb various energy sources and convert these these absorb energies into reusable energy. And this includes mediums such as what? Music vibration, sound wave, sun rays, sun heat, light rays, etc. So this is what can be used. So in Dr. Frank Bahar's theory, he says matter is shaped and structured by light. That's deep. Matter is shaped and structured by light. Right? So these molecular melanin combinations eat light because your melanin has black hole properties and so is able to eat light in order to maintain, expand, and evolve matter. And the more highly evolved the species, the more complex is biological capacity to use light. Get that in mind. So when people tell me they want to evolve, want to evolve, what do they need to do? They need to learn how to absorb light. And evolve, we're talking about as far as consciousness, not ne just necessarily the physical body-wise, even though there is a as above, so below, as within, so without. But once your consciousness is risen, your body will have to be the container or the vessel for that ma magnificent or that magnitude of energy. All right, so I'm going to leave it here for tonight. Are there any questions based on anything that be going on? No, thank you very much. All right. Appreciate y'all. We'll come back in next class and continue going over this and get into and deeper aspects of information. You know, I tell the Grand Sheik as we said hello as well. Yeah, sure, Peace, y'all.